My next guest played a role in helping to build military ties between the U.S. and Ukraine as part of U.S. European Command. I'm happy to welcome to the program tonight Mark Montgomery. Mark is a former U.S. Navy carrier strike group commander. He's now with the Foundation for the Defense of Democracies. Mark, it's good to have you on the program. You know, we've been seeing from the U.S. the announcement of military aid, one coming right after the next, another $800 million just this week. I mean, weapons to help Ukrainian troops hold back the Russians. Are the right weapons arriving at the right time? Well, first, thank you very much for having me. And uh, that's a great first question. The, uh, the th almost $3.4 billion now uh, since the beginning of, of the conflict. And, and I do believe the right weapons have been coming. Uh, in terms of the right time, obviously, the preference would have been for these weapons to have come you know, uh, back when we had initial inklings of, of uh, aggression from Putin in November and December, and potentially that could deter an event like this. But given the realities of where we're at, I think this $3.4 in total has been uh, the right equipment uh, coming at the right times uh, to help the Ukrainians uh, fend off uh, the Russian aggression. The, the U.S. is giving Ukraine weapons which can help defeat an army in the field. A at the start of the invasion, they were supplying weapons suitable for insurgent operations. What has changed? So you're exactly right. At the beginning, it, the, the, the threat was really to Kiev and the, and the forces coming in that northern, in that northern front that Russia opened. And the, uh, the provision of the... Uh, Javelin and a lot of other anti-armor gear from Europe, European countries, particularly the United Kingdom, was absolutely critical to blunting uh, the, the Russian offensive. And so that was the right stuff now. Uh, the, the one group of weapons you're starting to see transition through this are uh, the use of uh, remote kind of one-way drones, whether they're the Switchblade 300s or 600s or now the Phoenix Ghost that we're hearing about. Mm -hmm. These are weapons that are useful both in an urban or a forest environment that we were in previously, but can also be used on the steppe, you know, when we're fighting, when Ukraine's fighting in the Donbass region. Mm -hmm. And so I think we, they have transitioned properly. And then finally, there's almost 90 pieces of 155 millimeter artillery and the, um, the vehicles to tow it. And then a total, I think, of about 180,000 rounds uh, to go with it are gonna be critical elements of, uh, of fighting the Russians on the Eastern Front as Russia works to solidify its gains, its previously held and what they hope to be future held gains in the Donbass region. U.S. President Biden, he seems convinced now that Ukraine, with the help of this immense transfer of weaponry, will be able to win this war against Russia. Do you agree? Well, I think we'd have to agree on, on what the definition of win is. If win is hold, uh, you know, uh, Ukraine, you know, uh, w you know, Western Ukraine, including, you know, Kiev and, and some portion of Eastern Ukraine, but lose the Donbass region, lose a land bridge to Crimea, uh, then, we, the, then Ukraine will win. I think Ukraine will be in, is in a position to hold, you know, its losses down to a solidification of the Donbass under Russian control and Russia achieving a land bridge to Crimea, both of which are patently illegal and inappropriate maneuvers by Russia, but which I think they have recalibrated, you know, the second offensive, uh, you know, the objectives of the second offensive to be. So th I guess the, the short answer is, yes, they'll win, but it's a, it's a truncated victory. We know that Ukraine is not a NATO member. Maybe you have some insight into this. How good are the lines of communication between the Pentagon and the Ukrainian military? Well, I've been very impressed. Uh, you know, not only I have to give a lot of credit to President Biden and his leadership team around him for staying committed to these uh, arms transfers, for rallying our European and NATO allies to also contribute, uh, you know, uh, once you know, we failed to deter Russia. I think we've done a good job assisting Ukraine in uh, minimizing the losses and even defeating the Russians, you know, tactically on, on the battlefield. And I think a, a significant element of that is the communications between uh, the Pentagon, but particularly U.S. European Command, which is a U.S. command in Stuttgart that is kind of a shadow uh, U.S. command alongside NATO uh, and really provides the logistics backbone to NATO and is providing the logistics backbone that's being utilized today. Mm -hmm. And so this U.S. European command logistics environment is supporting 
the kind of coalition of the willing, the United States and a great number, many of whom you listed uh, in your opening, uh, European allies who are flowing weapons into Poland and Slovakia and then are being pushed forward into, and these weapons subsequently being pushed forward into Ukraine, where the Ukrainians are doing a good job, obviously, you know, distributing it further. Obviously, that requires a lot of communication, and you have to give U.S. European Command and the Pentagon some credit. Mark, I have to ask you before we run out of time, you as an admiral, formerly at the head of a carrier task force, what is your assessment of what we saw last week, the sinking of the Moskva? So first, you know, it, it was a it was a, a bold move uh, by the Ukrainians. I don't think they have very many of these ne uh, these Neptune missiles, but they were rushing to get them completed last fall. Uh, they obviously got some completed, uh, and they they struck the the flagship of the of the Black Sea Fleet. Now we have to remind ourselves: it's a 40-year-old ship. It had a uh, SA 300-ish type uh, air defense system and uh, clearly was unprepared for the attack that came. But I think it does a great job, you know, deterring future Russian uh, maritime and amphibious action from the Black Sea. That makes the defense of Odessa and Mykolaiv, the city between Crimea and Odessa, I think much more easier for the, for the uh, Ukrainians as they don't have to plan for a, a large scale amphibious movement ashore by the Russians. Former U.S. Navy Admiral Mark Montgomery of the Foundation for the Defense of Democracies. Mark, we appreciate your time and your valuable insights tonight. Thank you. Thank you.